Christ, Juan Prieto Rodriguez, who is it's the third paper today. <laughs> so it's about uh, intergenerational, intergener gosh, intergenerational transmission of musical education. Actually, in my case, it goes in the other direction because my two kids are musicians and, and, and I'm starting to learn music. So sometimes it goes, it goes the other direction. You have 20 minutes? 25, 20, okay. 25. Thank you. So, uh, as Victor says, the, uh, this is a paper co-authored by Victor and uh, Juan. We started this paper a long time ago, and then we stopped with it, and we took it back last year, so we've done some changes. Uh, the main aim of this uh, analysis is to analyze how music is transmitted from mainly from parents to, to, to children, musical education. We talk about formal musical education. Uh, the idea is that it has been found that there is a positive correlation between education, parental education, and that of the children. It means that more educated parents tend to have more educated children. Most previous research, especially in economics, have uh, focused on formal education, or formal schooling, as this is thought to be the most important education for uh, uh, labor market outcomes. However, we reckon that there are other dimensions of education that can be worth considering. In this case, we're going to focus on musical education. Well, we can give a couple of reasons why we care about this. Uh, first of all, in especially in psychology, it has been found a positive correlation between musical uh, instruction, musical form and formal training, and other non uh, musical abilities such as mathematics or linguistics or uh, special abilities. The correlation is not very clear. It's not maybe more able kids are also going to be, get more instruction in music and so they're going to, their abilities are going to be enhanced. But there is some experimental evidence that finds a weak, uh, that finds that <laughs> musical instruction may in fact uh, increase kids' uh, IQ. And second, um, maybe more related to our uh, project, uh, is that music education may be related with music consumption. So if we want to increase the consumption of music by giving individuals more, by giving individuals more education in music, this will either by enhancing their human capital or by uh, exposing them more to, to musical experiences, they will probably are going to consume more music. So, the thing is that uh, in Spain and I guess in most other countries, uh, musical, formal musical lessons are not given at the school. In Spain, we have some uh, musical language or some musical history, but not formal music lessons, not playing an instrument or, or having formal lessons. So this is mainly a private decision. Parents have to decide whether or not they're going to send their children to their uh, school of music. Uh, so what we expect is that parents with musical educations, with musical education, sorry, uh, are more aware of the advantages of music uh, instruction, so they're more likely to give their children a musical education. One issue uh, that has been found in, in any uh, analysis of intergenerational transmission of education is the link of, uh, the, 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 the direction of the correlation between parental and uh, uh, children's musical ed uh, education in general. And depending on the direction of the causality, the policy implications can be really different. Maybe uh, it is more educated parents just have more information about the advantages of uh, education, so they're going to provide their kids with more education. So this is a causal effect. However, we could think that more educated parents are also more able par individuals, and these more able individuals are going to transmit genetically this higher ability to their kids, and these kids are going to be also more educated, but because they're more able. So uh, the policy implications of, of, the, uh, of the two things are different. 
uh, in the economics literature, there have been three main uh, uh, identifying strategies. Uh, there are a set of papers that focus on twin parents under the assumption that twins have the same genetic uh, information, they have the, the same unobservable traits, so they compare the levels of education of cousins of twin parents, and so they, they, can, they can net out the genetic effect. The problem with this uh, strategy mainly is that it is focused on a very uh, specific sample of individuals, twin people, but maybe the results are not generally generalized to, other, uh, to the rest of the population. Other studies compare natural and adopted children on the basis that adoptive parents and adoptees children, uh, they have no, no genetic correlation and the effect is going to be due to the environment. Again, this has a lot of problems, uh, mainly because these studies tend to compare natural and adopted children in different families, and the assumption is that the environment provided by both types of families are the same, and it does not have to be the case. And finally, another uh, approach is using natural experiments, uh, mainly educational reforms, and the most uh, used one is changes in the minimum school, li school living age. In some countries, there is a change at one point in the school living age, so instead of living at 15, you have to live at 16, at least. So th that's the minimum living age. So uh, these studies compare the results of kids whose parents were affected by the reform and of those, of those parents who were just a generation before and were not affected by the reform. So we have a natural experiment here. The problem here is that you are only focusing, you can only capture the effect for those individuals with low tastes for education. Those individuals who are going to go on with their education, wherever the law, are not going to be affected by the reform. Results of these strategies are quite mixed, and uh, they depend mainly on the data, on the country, and on the, strate on, on the identification strategy. Well, going back to our, to our uh, analysis, uh, what we are going to analyze the determinants of uh, an individual's educational choice, we're going to assume that M, MIC, is the musical education of child C in family I. X uh, refers to the characteristics of the child and of the family. M, I, super M, and M, I, super F refer to the father's mother's and music, um, father's musical training, respectively, and UI is a random variable. We include both parents' musical training in order to control for assortative mating. Uh, it has been said that if we only include, uh, for instance, just the, father's music, uh, just the father's education, the effect of the father will be capturing the direct effect of the father's education and also the indirect effect of the mother's if there is assortative mating in, in, in education. If more educated fathers, also marry more educated uh, ladies. So as we said before, assuming that uh, the parents' mm, uh, musical education is exogenous, it may lead to uh, biased estimates as there are unobservable factors that can affect both parents' and children's education and we're not taking them into account. With the data, uh, with respect to the data, we're going to use an original data set, which was, it was a survey that was carried out in Asturias to about 800 uh, individuals who were aged 18 or more. It was carried out in 2006. And we gathered information uh, at the individual level. We know whether the individual has any musical training or not, and uh, any other training in general arts. We know the age and the gender of the individual, we know the level of schooling, the area of residence, social status, just self-reported social status, and whether the father and or the mother have any musical training. These are some descriptive statistics. Um, about 52% of the sample are females. Uh, about 10% of the sample have some musical training. The proportion is slightly higher in the case of females, as, as expected, so. 
Females are uh, more educated than males. The proportion of females that have gone to college or, uh, is uh, significantly larger, and females are also younger than males. These are mainly the proportion of parents who have any musical training is about 4%, which is uh, significantly smaller than that of their kids. Well, um, with respect to the analysis, uh, we as we said before, we only know whether the individual has any musical training or not. We don't know the type of music. We don't know the number of years uh, the individual has been studying music or if he was uh, at, a, at a school of music or not. So well, the information is a bit limited in this case. So we estimate a probit model for the, uh, just to uh, analyze the probability of the individual having uh, musical instruction or not. We estimate the analysis for the whole sample and uh, separately for males and females. And uh, we have run the, Blandel, the smith blandel test uh, of exogeneity and we, do not re we cannot reject the exogeneity of the father's and mother's musical training in any of the models. So we are going to assume that in our estimation, we're going to assume that parents' musical training is exogenous. Well, first of all, uh, here we have the results for the whole sample. Well, three columns in column three, in column one, we just take into account the father's musical education, in column two, the mother's musical education, and in column three, we put them together. Well, being a female or not, uh, doesn't have, does not affect the probability of having any musical training. Uh, with respect to the father's and the mother's musical training, we find a positive effect for both parents' musical education uh, on their kids. And the effect is significantly larger in the case of the fathers. Note in column three that, that when we include both parents' musical training, the coefficients of the father and of the mother drop significantly. Well, we also find that uh, older individuals have a lower probability of having musical education Individuals who go to college with higher education uh, are also more likely to have some musical training and also those individuals who declare themselves to belong to the upper class are also more likely to have some musical education. So these two last results, higher education and upper class having a higher probability of uh, having musical education reflects a positive income effect in musical training. This is a summary of the results. And now we turn to the results of males and females separately. We'll just, we'll just focus on columns three and six because it's just when we have both parents' musical education considered. First of all, going to the males equation, we find that in the case of males, both fa the father and the mother's musical education has a positive effect on the probability of the son's musical education. And the effect is significantly larger in the case of the mother. If we look at the female's equation in column six, we only find a significant effect. Sorry, we only find a significant effect of the father on the daughter, but not on the on the mother. This is a bit contrary to what I should have expected. Uh, going back uh, with respect to age, age does not play any significant role in the, the in the female's equation, but older males are less likely to have musical training. With respect to education, girls with higher education, just high school or college education, are more likely to have uh, musical training. However, in the case of males, education, formal education, is not a significant uh, determinant. But belonging to the upper class is positively related to the probability of having musical education for boys, but not for girls. So, just the results. So, yes, to conclude and just summarize our results, we find evidence of an intergenerational transmission of cultural values from parents to, to, their, to their kids. In particular, in this case, we find it for uh, the case of musical uh, instruction. 
The pattern of the transmission mechanism seems to differ across genders. In the case of males, both the father's and the mother's education, musical education, has a positive effect on the son's musical training, and the effect of the mother is significantly larger than that of the father. In the case of females, the transmission seems to go from the father to the daughter, but not from the mother to the, to the daughter. Male's musical education is not linked to schooling, but it is linked positively related to the social status. So it seems that there is a component of uh, conspicuous consumption in the case of females, sorry, in the case of males. In the case of females, musical education is positively related to formal education. So these two types of education seem to be complementary, but the social status, one we control for formal education, is no, 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 not, not significant. Age does not affect uh, the probability of females having musical education. So it seems that a musical training has played a traditional role in the education of females. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Why, let me start, I have a good position here. Why, why do you think that uh, the education of the father and the mother could be endogenous? Well, because maybe, uh, the, the idea is maybe because uh, more able parents may just have more, more ability towards music and this is going to be transmitted to the son. Not in your case, I don't know in your case. No, but there is no, I mean, there is no reverse causality. It goes from mother and father to, to, the kids. to the child. So that should be exogenous because you mentioned that it could be endogenous. You said something about... Uh, it's going to be far... It's going to be part of the error term. And you, 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 yes. you, you have an endogeneity problem in the statistical terms. Maybe no, the, no, yeah, the, quas, the causal effect, yeah, but uh, if there are some unobservable characteristics that are uh, transmitted to the kids, no, because of genetic or because of any other cause, there will be in the error term and they cause uh, uh, an endogeneity problem. But finally, we didn't, we didn't find that uh, this is yeah. the case here, so. No, yeah, maybe it was because of the, 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 type, the way the, the variables were defined, or, or we, we don't know. Can I speak? <laughs> Okay. Uh, if you go back to the uh, to last table, please. Yeah, I think it's very interesting this uh, difference between uh, uh, males and females. First, one question, but I don't know whether we have any explanations why the effect of age jumps. There are holes. I mean, it's it's a, it's a significant uh, some interval, then is not significant, then it's significant again. Then so it depends. Yeah, but also the fact that there are some old, suppose the 50, 64 is not, 35, 45 is, and 65 or more is again. Anyway, this is something that I don't understand. But uh, um, if you uh, want to have an explanation, I don't know whether you have an explanation for this difference between males and females. Maybe, uh, you have because you didn't say, so I didn't read the paper, so I don't know whether you have, maybe, could be also the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the what is conceived to be art, uh, art education for males and females. In Italy, for instance, girls go to dance, uh, and uh, and it's very rare that males actually go to uh, dance classes. So it is artistic education. So uh, music education is competing against dance education, but we have a really strong gender effect. They don't go to, uh, males don't go to dance. So if you do one thing you cannot do, it's very difficult to do both. 
and and in this respect, you may have not, not such a big impact on females while you have on males because of this uh, uh, of this fact that there may be females go to dance. So maybe you, if you have data, you could see whether these females actually do something else like dance, for instance. Uh, and in that case. Maybe you yeah. don't see this this effect. It's not that they are not. Uh, I mean, if you have a musical education, it doesn't mean that you don't want your girls to uh, to do dance instead of music. I mean, it's still part of musical education, also dance, uh, and therefore. The, but there is a gender effect that in music maybe you don't have, but in dance you have, and therefore that maybe can explain this striking difference between males and females, maybe. I, I, I don't I don't know I, we, we, we could say that because I think we have a, a yeah we could I, I can't remember but I think we ha we have some more information about the in the data set we had a, 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 a yeah, variable a a dummy, a variable about uh, yeah. hmm? about here. other uh, training general training no, yeah in general arts, and it, it, it was not significant. But I don't know if it, this is... General arts, dance? No, no, uh, no painting no, no, and... No, that's what I mean, because it's still musical. It's really related. Uh, which is the precise question uh, you ask the interviewed people? Uh, did you attend some uh, courses in music uh, without any distinction between classic and yeah. rock music? Yeah. Because it could make a difference. Yeah. I mean, if a boy plays in a rock band, perhaps he answers, yes, I have uh, musical training, even if uh, <laughs> uh, it could it. be questionable. So, so the, the question was a self-assessment about uh, musical, musical education, training. whatever it could you mean. You can play in the band of the village or you well some musical training at least you need to have attended to some you have to yeah, be musical training you not have to be trained it's not just to play in a band you have to be at a school or following courses on, on music it could be pop music but you have to be trained it's not so just to is no to no, no, no yes 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 but it is not enough to be part of a of a band no and be uh, i mean uh, amateur play, uh, musician without any uh, musical training at all. These people are excluded. You have to be trained to be a, a one. In the, I think there are several self-trained people who perhaps answer yes, I am trained. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just interested in that. Up for males, being uh, declaring that they're in the upper class would be significantly more likely to have uh, musical training. Is there is there a particular reason for this? Is there some kind of social stigma or something against lower middle class men participating in musical training? I didn't know if there was a reason for that. It just seemed mm, no. The reason we just give is yes, yes. Yes, yeah, a bit to, mm. to, to show off. Because uh, I could understand if this was ballet or something, that there's some kind of social stigma, but I didn't know if it was with music. We interpret it that way, but... First of all, thank you, and I'm very much impressed by the Oedipian character of your conclusions, between the influence of uh, the, the father on the... the, 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 the the girls and the mother on the boys. Uh, but apart from that, I, was, I have a question. Do children uh, practice choral singing at school in your country? No. No. no I don't. They pay the flute, yeah. But which is very important, because if you look to the Protestant country where choral singing is a systematic practice, most pe more people are, or most people are practicing music because it's part of their formal natural education without having to go to a, a, a class of instrument. They're just singing from three, four, five. And then they have such an habit about music that they go further. So I would like to, to know, but this is not the case in Spain. No, that's different. <laughs> that is true, but and, 
And then my, my other question is, uh, uh, you haven't done anything about the great parents, or the influence of the great parents. Great parents. No, no. Because, because I, I have the impression that these days, the musical education being decreasing dramatically with, let's say, the, the 30, 40s, the influence of the great parents is very important because they have the knowledge, they have the time, and then people who organize uh, cultural events, of musical cultural events, should try to find out solution to organize something for great parents with great children together. Because it's a kind of uh, common interest that can be induced from the two so that they can do something together and something which have an appeal to the musical life of the city. Because you can do that during all the time of the day and so on and so on. And you may have a kind of connivance between the great parents and the, 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 the grandchildren about music. Hello. Well, I just wanted to answer to you about um, the musical education in, in our schools. It's unfortunately very horrible. Um, uh, when, when we are a child, until we are uh, 12 years old, 14 years old, more or less, I think that uh, our children only have um, two or three years music, maybe only one hour a week, and, they, and, and sometimes the teacher doesn't know music, so or not, not a lot. And uh, in high schools, it's the high school uh, who decide, which decides if they are going to have music or not in this year or whatever. And sometimes it depends on the staff. So it means uh, even we, we haven't got choirs, for example, what you can find uh, around Europe in most of the schools, because I think that choir could be a good key to introduce you to the world of music. So unfortunately here um, in this country, if you want to learn music, you have to go to extra classes or to the conservatoire or school of music. So it's, it's pathetic in a way, no? It's right. Um, I, have, I have a brief... Um, I have a brief technical um, a question. Um, I wonder whether you have tried to include uh, interaction terms between father and mother musical education. Um, it could be the case that, uh, well, having both parents with musical education would create some overproportional uh, effect uh, on the child. Yeah, that's. Uh, I th uh, I would try, but the sample is so small that we have very few observations with uh, both the father and the mother having musical education. We try to do it. No, not with that idea. The, the, the point is quite, quite, quite good. But yeah, we had some problems, especially because of the small sample size. So. I was for I'm a bit worried, I must say, about the data, because you have 800 observations, but you have only 10% of people who say, I had some musical education. So you have many, many, many zeros. And it may be that the proportion of zeros is different between the two subsamples, and that you have uh, in the second sample females or males, I don't know in which one, that you have uh, less, less mothers who had musical education. So you should, I think what I would do is to check very carefully whether the proportions of mothers and fathers who had musical education is roughly the same in both subsamples, because it could be that it's just an effect of the sample. Yeah. So you have. Yeah, we have uh, uh, the fathers and mothers musical training. Four percent. Yeah, and it is in the case of females, uh, the, the proportion of mothers is like. Yeah, it's roughly. Uh, roughly the same, you would say. No big difference. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So thank you very much. We are going to close this session.
And let's take five minutes just in case you want to go to a toilet or things like that, and then we will finish with the roundtable, right? <laughs>